Tier 9 is the middle child of World of Tanks Blitz. Nobody really cares about it and most people play Tier 8 or Tier 10. Now I've already talked about what are the best Tier 9 tanks in World of Tanks Blitz. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. But now let's have a look at really truly the worst of Tier 9 Does anyone really care about the M46 pattern? I mean, if you do, put it down in the comments. I would like to know the two of you. But here's the thing. The last time I touched the M46 pattern was when I was an age where the priest still wanted to touch me, which is a very long time ago. So this vehicle hasn't really been relevant for essentially years at this point, and the entire American medium tank line has been suffering from absolute mediocrity for a very long time. I even myself used something called the Pershing test to find out whether a tier 8 premium tank is even worth considering to buy at any price, really. Basically, the way it goes, if if the vehicle is worse than the Pershing, then it is never worth purchasing. That's how that works. Now, the M46 pattern is kind of in that same league of... What the hell is even the point? It's the most average of average of boring things that you will ever encounter. And on top of that, it's also difficult to play because the third armor doesn't really exist for that matter. You can get bounces off the sides of it if you keep wiggling back and forth. So, not really much armor there. Mobility is... Not that great, especially if you compare it to something like an AMX first prototype that is better and also has more armor, even though it has less alpha damage. And the gun on this vehicle, it's just bland and average. So overall, what we have here is we have a tank that, on its way to the M48 pattern, which itself is now kind of in the middle of everything, it's not bad, it's not good, it's not even worth grinding. So what you have here is a pointless vehicle that currently has no purpose other than to torture you. But, still recommend trying it out if you're already very deep in your Blitz journey. It's a bit of a weird sight, isn't it? The Tier 125 was my number one pick for the top five Tier 10 tech trees. And if you haven't seen that video yet, then check it out. So why is the M103 on this very list. Well, there are two very good reasons for that. It doesn't necessarily have to do much with the top-end vehicle performance, but with the usefulness of the vehicle, because the first big problem with this tank is that to get to the T125, what you have to research is the engine. However, the gun and the turret that makes this vehicle somewhat bearable are in a completely different line, and you have to go out of your way to then get the vehicle to an average performance level. So you have to spend a lot of free XP to get to having this thing work. Which, first of all, isn't a great thing. And then once it does work, it is quite a lot worse than the T125 in especially hull down gameplay because the turret of this vehicle is absolutely massive and can be penned quite easily. The turret, even though is at the back of the turret, sticks out quite far which means even if you're hull down, you can still get penned through that cupola on top. But overall, not really a vehicle that is all that great, and that you also have to spend a lot of XP even making it worthwhile. However, because it leads to the T125, I highly recommend getting it and getting to the T125 anyway. A lot of people really dislike the E50 now. I don't know why that is. Maybe is it the awful penetration that it also does share with the M46 pattern? Is it the not so great armor compared to the E50M? Because while the E50M has excellent side armor that is great for side scraping because of its side skirts, this vehicle kind of doesn't have that, so it will suffer quite a lot. It also can be penned a lot easier through the turret than the Tier 10 E50M, so overall is not really that great in terms of gun and also its armor. And then we have the mobility. Well, it's also quite a bit worse. I don't know what kind of engine they put in there, but it definitely isn't a good one. And we all have to be very happy that the E50M got the upgrade that it did. Because the E50M is a great tier 10. However, the E50 is a terrible tier 9. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't prepare you well. Because it plays extremely similar to the E50M. Sharing most of its characteristics. Just being that much worse at absolutely all of them. This is a great preparation to the E50M. Because if you can play well in the E50. And when I played this vehicle over 9 years ago. I really didn't. This 
can be the perfect preparation for the E50M. Because if you can get this one playing well, you're going to do absolutely great in the E50M. Now, the first thing to mention is I notice a lot of really terrible T54E1 players on the battlefields out there. Now, I do think that is because of the people coming from T49 not knowing how to play a vehicle like this. Because if you spend a long time playing a tier 8 derp light tank, you're not really going to have any clue of how to play this vehicle. On top of that, the vehicle itself also isn't really that good, while the tier 10 T57 Heavy is one of the best damage dealers in the game. This vehicle just doesn't quite cut it, starting off with the absence of HE rounds in this vehicle, missing out on quite a lot of damage. And overall, the stats of this vehicle aren't really that promising and has a similar problem to the M103, just isn't really good at anything. And the autoloader also makes it more complicated to play, while not really rewarding you. With a good autoloader like the T57 Heavy has, this thing is just about meh which isn't really that great, but then again, it can work in the hands of a competent player, just like any other vehicle as well. It doesn't really have any armor, it doesn't really have a great mobility, it doesn't really have a good gun. To be the worst tier 9 in the game, it doesn't just have to be a bad tank, it also has to have a pretty big contrast to the tier 10, and I don't think there is a bigger contrast between the tier 9 and the tier 10 than the Leopard PTA to the Leopard 1. While the Leopard 1 is an excellent vehicle for good players and among the best tier 10s if you're a good player, just not very good for average players, the Leopard PTA isn't good for anybody because this vehicle, for example, only has 6 degrees of gun depression, has absolutely no armor whatsoever, and on top of that, it also is nowhere near as quick as the tier 10 Leopard 1. So it is a complete and utter disappointment because what is there really that is good about this vehicle compared to the Leopard 1? Well, absolutely nothing. And it's not even nearly as good as other tier 9s either. And while it still can be played well if you are a skilled player, which applies to literally any tank, making that centers pointless, this vehicle is really gonna be the ultimate stop for everyone that tries to get to the Leopard 1, because if you can't deal with this absolute piece of garbage, you're not gonna really excel in the Leopard 1 either. So even though this is a terrible vehicle, is it a great test to find out if you got it or not?